Today I've got a nice integral from everyone's favorite integral suggester. So our goal here is to find the integral from zero to pi over two of x squared over tangent squared x dx. And we're gonna use the three following tools of which we will prove two. So the first is the limit as x goes to zero of x squared cotangent x is equal to zero. The second is the limit as x goes to zero of x natural log sine of x equals zero. And finally, we have the integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of sine x dx is in fact equal to minus pi over two natural log of two. And we will not prove this one. I made a video when the channel was a lot younger where I derived this identity. Maybe see if you can find that. If you post a link to it in the comments, I will pin that comment. Okay, so let's maybe get going. We'll actually just focus on this second limit as we will derive this value for the first limit via this calculation. Okay, so we're looking at the limit as x goes to zero of x times the natural log of sine of x. And since we're doing sort of a complicated integral, I think L'Hopital's rule is fair use here. So this is gonna be the limit as x goes to zero. I'm gonna write this as the natural log of sine x over one over x. Okay, now as x goes to zero, sine of x will be going towards zero. And then the natural log of an argument which is tending towards zero from above, which as we'll see, we will tend towards zero from above because this is all wrapped up inside of this integral. That's equal to minus infinity. Okay, so this is tending towards minus infinity in the numerator. And then as x tends to zero from above in the denominator, that's tending towards positive infinity. So anyway, we've got an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity, which means we're able to use L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the numerator will give us cosine of x over sine of x. So that's by the chain rule. So the sine is sent downstairs from taking the derivative of the natural log, and then the derivative of sine is cosine. Again, like I said, by the chain rule. Now using the power rule here, visualizing this one over x as x to the minus one, we have this is minus one over x squared. Now let's do a little bit of simplification here. That's gonna give us this limit as x goes to zero of minus x squared times cotangent of x, given that cosine over sine is equal to cotangent. But notice that is exactly this first integral, well, up to a sine, or this first limit up to a sine. So if we continue on and prove that this limit is zero, we will achieve the fact that this second limit is also zero. Okay, so that being said, I wrote it like this via the simplification writing sine or cosine over sine as cotangent, just to make it look like this first limit. Now what I'll do is I'll put it back in terms of cosines and sines to calculate the limit a bit more appropriately. So I'll pull my minus sign out. So I have this is equal to minus. I have my limit as x goes to zero of, I'll write this as x squared times cosine of x over sine of x. Now looking at this, this is of type zero over zero. As x goes to zero, x squared goes to zero, sine of x goes to zero. So that means I can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's see, that's gonna give me minus the limit as x goes to zero. I need to use the product rule in the numerator. So that's gonna be something like two x cosine x and then minus x squared sine x. Keeping in mind that the derivative of cosine is minus sine, now taking the derivative of the denominator, I get cosine of x. But now let's notice this is no longer an indeterminate form. As x goes to zero, cosine goes to one. So that means I can essentially just plug x equals zero in here because I have a function which is continuous at zero. But now I've got zero in the numerator because two times zero times cosine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one, but still the zero zeroes it out. And then here I have zero squared times zero, so that's also zero. So in the end, I have that this limit is equal to zero. 
But now let's see, reading it from here to here, we have achieved this first limit. And then also reading it from the very beginning to the very end, we have achieved this second limit. So either way we look at it, we have achieved these two limits, which will be necessary for our integral. Okay, now let's jump into the calculation of our goal. So we've built up all of the necessary tools in order to calculate this integral. Now let's jump into it. So I'm going to take this tangent squared and I will rewrite it as cosine squared over sine squared, but then flip everything back so I have a less complicated fraction. So in particular, I'll rewrite this as the integral from 0 to pi over 2 x squared times cosine squared x over sine squared x dx. Well, notice that's exactly equal to x squared times cotangent squared, but one over cotangent squared is tangent squared or one over tangent squared is cotangent squared. So we're good to go there. Okay, so now from here, I'll take this cosine squared and use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite it as one minus sine squared. So that leaves me with the integral from zero to pi halves. I'll have x squared times one minus sine squared x all over sine squared x dx. So that's starting to look good. Now I'll notice that if I take this sine squared and cancel this sine squared, I have something which is very simple to integrate. That motivates me to split this into two parts using that cancellation as motivation. So let's see. Canceling this, I'll pick up a minus sign and I'll have minus the integral from zero to pi over two of x squared dx, and then plus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, let's see, we've got x squared over sine squared, but I'm going to rewrite that as x squared times cosecant squared x dx. Okay, so just to reiterate what happened, this guy right here turned into this part of the integral, and this one term right here turned into this second integral. Okay, so that's starting to look good. But if we look at the second integral over here, keep in mind that we know the antiderivative of cosecant squared. So that's really good because I can do an integration by parts off of that knowledge. So let's set up the integration by parts over here. So maybe we'll set u equal to x squared. So maybe I'll underline that. That's gonna be my u term but that tells me that du is equal to 2x dx just by taking the derivative. And then likewise, my dv will be all of the rest of the stuff. So I have dv equals cosecant squared x dx. Now taking the antiderivative of that, so that's kind of a well-known antiderivative that if you're taking calculus too, you, could, you should keep in the back of your mind. That is minus cotangent of x. And that completes all of the parts that we need to work through our integration by parts. So we'll use the standard integration by parts formula. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du to simplify that guy over there. Okay, so let's do it. And while we're at it, we'll simplify this first integral as well. So this guy right here will simplify down to one, minus one third x cubed evaluated from zero to pi halves. And then we'll have plus, so like I said, u times v. So that's going to be x squared times minus cotangent of x. So that's going to turn this plus into a minus. And then we have x squared cotangent x. We need to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 2. And then we'll have minus v du. The minus signs will cancel. And we'll end up with plus 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of x co times cotangent of x dx. Okay. So now let's notice that if we plug pi over 2 into this, well, we get pi squared over 4 here. That's not super helpful. But cotangent of pi over 2 is 0 because cotangent is cosine over sine and cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 
Next, zero represents like an indeterminate form in this kind of limiting procedure. So we actually need to take the limit, but this is the exact limit that we need to calculate, which we already calculated to be zero. So that means this whole guy right here turns into zero. And so that's gonna leave us with something like this. We have minus, well, let's see, that's gonna be one over three times pi cubed over eight, so that's gonna be minus pi cubed over three times eight, which is 24, and then plus two times something calculated from this integral. But in fact, we can calculate that integral with another round of integration by parts. So let's take our u to be this x. So I'll write it up here now, u is x. That tells me that du is just equal to dx, but that means that dv will be all the rest of it. So in this case, dv is equal to cotangent of x dx. That means that v is equal to the natural log of sine of x. Maybe if you want to be super careful, it's in fact the natural log of the absolute value of sine of x. But between 0 and pi over 2, sine is positive. So we don't need to worry about that absolute value. Now again, applying this integration by parts formula, we'll get u times v. So that's going to be x times natural log of sine of x. We need to evaluate that from 0 up to pi over 2. Okay, so that's looking good. And then we need to do minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of, well, let's see, v du, but that's just going to be our natural log of sine of x dx. But now let's check this thing out right here. If we plug in pi over 2, we'll get the natural log of 1, which is 0. If we plug in zero, well, we can't actually plug in zero, we need to take a limit, but that's this exactly this limit over here, which we did earlier. So that means this whole term here goes towards zero, and we're left with this integral from zero to pi over two of natural log of sine of x dx, which we pointed out before we started that I've done in a much older video, like I said, Post in the comments a link to that and I will pin that comment. That will give us this minus pi over two natural log of x. So in the end, we'll have minus pi cubed over 24 and then a minus two times this minus pi over two. So that'll be a plus pi natural log of two. And that's our final value for our goal integral. And that's a good place to stop.